Yeah, let's go once again. It is the Digital to Dice podcast. This is officially episode one. Ron, I am Dave. Ron, say hi. How you doing, Dave? Yeah, so we finally made it to episode one. We did a little intro uh, show, which was considered our home opener, so to speak. But now we're back with episode one of the Digital to Dice podcast. We talk about everything from digital games to cards and dice games, consoles, PC, cards and dice, everything in between. So, Ron, how you been in this hot summer so far? Oh, my gosh. It's just warm and sticky here, but having a good time and trying to stay cool when I can. Now, are you uh, still uh, having ice cream and problems with ice cream carts, or what is the deal with that? Uh, no, I have not been run over by an ice cream cart in a couple months, you know, and hopefully that won't happen again, but... Uh, I've got my uh, haagen in the freezer, and I intend to indulge on some of that this evening. I don't know what it is with ice cream this summer. Uh, my wife and I went to Dairy Queen, I want to say about a week ago. Hot day, we went down to get an ice cream, and she tripped and smashed into a, a light post outside of Dairy Queen. You know, how they have the, uh, the the metal tables and chairs outside so you can sit in. Well, I guess there was like a, a post that held the, like a street light or something that was right above them. And she went outside and, and clipped her flip-flops and went smashing into that. So I don't know what it is with ice cream and, and accidents, but it, it's happening. It's, it's a real thing. <laughs> I scream, you scream, we all scream about ice cream or about getting hurt about ice cream. I guess so. So so uh, aside from the heat, uh, what's going on up there in, uh, in the wonderful country? Oh, it's raining up here, but, you know, as far as what I'm doing, just picked up some lovely artwork. If you go to my channel and watch the uh, Retro Sports Network, by the way, and if you watch my little Ask Uncle Ron thing that was released on Sunday, whenever last Sunday was. Now, this is YouTube uh, we're talking about here, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, of course. Uh, you can see a couple pieces that, I, that the wife and I bought to display in our apartment. Uh, one from the top of Mount Philo, which is a little high peak around here that overlooks Lake Champlain, a beautiful painting done by Laurel Waters. And the one I picked up is a beautiful painting of done of the Burlington, Vermont skyline for what it is from Lake Champlain. So Laurel Waters Art, or and I forget the, the name of her website offhand, but oh, just absolutely gorgeous stuff. Oh, fantastic. So uh, what have you been playing? Anything good? Well, let's see. On the channel, we're trying to finish up our 1982 Major League Baseball replay, and the Baltimore Orioles are trying to clinch the last playoff spot. But offline, I'm doing some roster card baseball, 1967 Boston Red Sox replay, a little ASG golf, made my own card in that game. It's a card and dice port into the computer. So I'm hacking away with some of the best of all time. And uh, also doing, so in non-sports gaming, some City Skylines or the game that will bring your computer to its knees. Oh, is it is it really uh, PC graphical it, heavy? There's a lot of assets for it. I mean, it's a, basically it's a traffic simulator in a city painter. If you've ever done the SimCity thing, you're kind of halfway familiar with it. And uh, yes, it does eat processor power, but it's so much fun. Mm, I've, I've done body painting, but not city painting. Um, well, this won't get you arrested, Dave. <laughs> Kidding. Mr. That. Dayglo, as we call you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over here, yeah, same thing. Uh, real hot, uh, real muggy. It makes it really challenging to try to run hockey leagues in the summer when it's 90 degrees because people don't want to play hockey. They want to go to the beach, and it makes it hard to, uh, to fill all the spots for the game. But we make the best of it if we can. As far as what I'm playing, um... Uh, enjoy. I went back to playing some Borderlands 2 on the PS4. I really like that game. It's an older game, but uh, I, I enjoy playing that. It's really fun, and, and it's a silly, silly game. Uh, on the computer, uh, back to my 1974 action PC hockey season with the Boston Bruins, and we just lost Ron to the California Seals 5-4. to four. In that yeah, game. but do you really mind that at all, considering that you are the biggest California Seals fan on the East Coast? No, I, I didn't. It was fun. Usually I skip over the games like that, and I go right for the better games. But I said, I'm going to go to California, and we're going to smash the Seals, Esposito or the whole bit. And uh, no, we did not win. We fell behind 5-3. to three. We got a power play goal in the third to make it 5-4. to four. Had a late power play goal. Goalie pulled, could not tie the game. So the, so this 74 Bruins team in the Action PC Hockey Replay has lost to the Capitals, which was their inaugural season. And we've lost, I think we lost or tied to the Scouts, and now we've lost to the Seals. Now you should explain, that is not a stock team. You've um, 
souped it up a little bit. Well, in my playthrough here in 74, what happened is uh, the Russians and the Canadians all made up. After that Summit Series in 72, they all made up, but everyone's all friends. And the Bruins signed uh, Trechiak to play net. And up front, uh, they had uh, Mikhailov and Karlamov. So I signed three Russians to the team. Okay, Now, I didn't take anybody off another team, so it's not like I scooped up all the better guys and put them on the team. I just grabbed some free agents that signed from Russia. So I got Esposito centering Mikhailov and Karlamov with Trechiak and net. And we are in first place, but... We are, we are not stomping. As mentioned, we lost to the Seals. We lost to the Capitals. So uh, it's interesting to see the effect that the uh, the three Russians are having on the 74 Bruins, which is really not much, if I can say. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say that. It's your replay. <laughs> but, so, you know, I mean, this kind of goes with the shows, the depth of the games, that you can do that. I, I made myself a golfer in ASG Golf, and – a fairly good one, but I'm not dominating. I'm not going out there and winning, but I'm contending, and that's what you want. You don't want to sit there if you're going to be creative and insert yourself or your buddies or whatever into one of these computer games. Is it you know you don't is to have fun with it, and I think in your case it kind of makes it more fun that you're not rolling over people. But it is kind of funny that you lost to the Caps that won all of nine games and. That year. Yeah, it is actually. And and what I'm actually finding out, and this might be a topic for a future show, is that when you go back and do your replays, so I'm playing the Bruins, which are one of the better teams in 74. Uh, the other game I'm playing is Cards and Dice game called Shootout Hockey, which you know I really, really like that. And there's a lot of videos on um, my channel, the Dave Gardner YouTube channel, of me playing Shootout Hockey. <clears throat> I am the 73 Seals. I think what it is. Okay, so I'm the 73 Seals in that replay. I'm, I'm replaying all of their games, just the Seals, just to see if I can get more than, I think they got 10 or 12 wins that season. I want to see how many wins I can get, okay? And uh, I find that when I'm playing the Seals, the expectations are so low that when I win a game, it's real exciting. Whereas when playing the 74 Bruins, adding three top Russians to the team, obviously there's no excitement when you win the game. In fact, it's it's downright depressing when you lose to the Seals. So I guess maybe a topic for some other show might be, do you want to replay a season as the underdog or replay a season as the favorite? Because it's really two different experiences that I'm having right there. Absolutely, and that's a good topic in going. I mean, you, there's just kind of endless topics, and that works the same whether you're doing cards and dice or whether you're doing it on the PC. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm doing, like I said, so the uh, action PC hockey I've been playing. Boy, that that is so fun. I get that set up with all the logos and customized rings. I must have spent, no joke, Ron, I probably spent three or four or five hours just setting up that season. I went in and put in everybody's number because in that game I have the announcer set up to announce the goals, and if you put in the number, it will announce the number as well. And that's the good thing about that is he has it tied up with the Microsoft narrator. Uh, yeah. All of his games are. And you can have as much or as little interaction with that as you want. Yep. No, that is really fun. So I've had a good time with that as well. So, um, and, oh, and I've, I found a couple of other really cool cards and dice games. Boy, that wrestling game is fun. i got to do more of that. Uh, Chris's uh, wrestling dice game, I think it's called. Boy, that is it is a good time. Uh, check out that video on my channel, the uh, Chris's Dyson Wrestling Game. Boy, that is so fun. I need to find him and talk to him because that flows so well. you got seven charts, and, and you roll the dice to see who goes on offense. You roll to see what happens. If he throws them into the ropes, you go to the rope chart. If you throw them in the turnbuckle, you go to the turnbuckle chart. Throw them out of the ring, you go to the out of the ring chart. And everything just flows from there, and you wear the opponent down and try to pin him. And uh, mm-hmm. some matches only last a couple of minutes, and others will go five or six, you know, depending on what happens. It is really fun, though. And you found that at sportsreplays.net, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely free. Yeah, that, that website is a wealth, and we'll do another whole show on that as well. So anyway, so uh, I got this really crazy sound effect we're going to play here as we lead into our, our topic of today, and that is the Action PC Basketball 2019 release. Ron, you picked us up last week, right? Yes, I did. I picked it up on the, on the pre-sale and got about ten dollars off the price. And uh, really, is a you know, if you're familiar with the game at all, we're we're about to talk about it. All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about Action PC Basketball 2019. We're about to go into another dimension. The action PC basketball. <laughs> so f- before we get going here, uh, I'm not a huge basketball guy, but I'm big into the bird. 
era, obviously, in the Boston area. That was my sweet spot. Bird, McHale, Parrish, all those guys. And I know they had a, a couple other runs recently, but, you know, my big thing was uh, back in the day. How big of a basketball fan are you? Not really huge. Okay. You, know, you and I are pretty close in age and um, used to. You know, we did not get the games growing up, and so it's whatever they showed on CBS on Sunday afternoons. So the five or six Celtics games that you got a year, and of course the playoffs, and you know, growing up in Boston with or, or as a Red Sox fan that weren't very good, you know, the Celtics were the one thing to look forward to because the Red Sox were going to break your heart every year. But um, you know, I, much more of affinity for when I was younger. You know, I, I guess that's the era of basketball. I watched a lot more college basketball over the years than pro. Uh, really? See, I, I, I'm the other way. I have a hard time watching college basketball. College football is about the only the only college sport I can really get into. I wasn't a basket, college basketball guy. The thing with the college basketball was, you know, it's a game of runs. And the at, you can't ever beat the atmosphere watching a college basketball game. Before the big money got into it and everybody making, you know, the coaches making millions of dollars in salaries when the players get no, let me not get that part of the conversation. But, you know, it, it started, um, not to get too far into the story hole here, we had a kid in the Albany, New York area, I grew up in southern Vermont, who was signed by North Carolina by the name of Sam Perkins. I think that name even rings a bell for you. I don't know if he's a pro basketball Hall of Famer, but a very serviceable career with the with Dallas and a, and a few other teams. And so that kind of piqued my interest in the, Perkins' sophomore year, I think it was, uh, North Carolina had a freshman by the name of Mike Jordan. Ever heard of him? Yeah. Yeah. And so that was kind of the easy, that was kind of the hook and the catch, and we had ESPN for the first time then, and so the games ran quick, about two hours, and they were always on. And it's just, you know, it's a di- completely different game than the pro game, or at least it was then. So, Okay, so tell us a little bit about uh, this game here. Action PC basketball, well, you know, if you're familiar with any of Dave's, uh, Cook's, or Koch's games, um, it pretty much is you can replicate any season of your choice, whether in the pros. So if you're a big old ABA fan, you can buy all the ABA seasons. He's got every NBA season, even the ones before the shot clock. So from 1947 to today, the purchase I got made this. Well, this was the deluxe version. It came with the modern this past season, Toronto's championship over Golden State, uh, and also came released with, I don't think these are re-releases, but you got the 69-70 season, which is Willis Reed and the Knicks beating the Lakers. 85-86, which for you and I is right in our peak. That was Celtics championship number 14. And 98-99, and I don't remember who won there. Along with the standard... Uh, 20 great pro teams league and 20 great college champions league. And so that's what you got. You pretty much got six seasons for the upgrade and presale price of $38. Okay. So did you have the 2018 version of this game? Uh, I did. Um, Because I stream a lot on my channel, I buy every game, whether I play it a ton or not, because when you, when I want to show off these things, I want to show off the current version. Um, and I'm trying to think of what the 17 was like, but the 18, 18 I mean, the, the basketball games, along with all of his other games, are very steady games as far as ability to play and such like that. Um, and the game stuff is kind of funky at times, and no basketball game, as far as I'm concerned, Dave, handles timeouts in a proper manner. You know, a team gets behind 10, 15 points. You and I would call timeout to try to to stem the tide, stop the momentum. The computer just doesn't do that. The changes in this version that caught my eye was the ability to create fictional teams. You tell it what year you want it to set. You tell it whether you want to do college or pro, how many free agents to do, and voila, it'll come up with a with a random league for you. Um, and they've also played with a schedule generator and end-of-game situations some. Okay, um, so uh, big changes from last year or, or not? I would say, you know, if you bought last year's, unless you have a direct 
a desire to do a fictional season? I would say no. Um, you know, there's positives certainly with the change. I think it depends on how much of a basketball fan you are. I mean, certainly if you're a Toronto Raptors fan, you want this because it's the first major release to feature the NBA champions, and it's always cheaper to buy the current set with the game. Uh, if you haven't bought in three or four years, uh, you can look at a demo on my channel. Our friend Al Red Sox fan's YouTube channel has a full game up on there. You can see whether or not it's worth it for you. Um but if you are like you, if you're a casual basketball fan, I'm going to say it's probably not a must-buy, but that's not a knock on the game. I just don't think there are enough changes from year to year to say, oh, got to have this. Okay. Now, and like all the other games over at um, DKSports.com, you can buy the individual seasons for this Um yeah, I think I actually have that 85 season. That's one of the reasons I didn't get the update because I was like, well, I already have that season. And the other ones I really don't have any interest in playing. Um, what, are, what are some of the key features about this game in general, the action PC basketball game in general? If you're a basketball fan, what are you going to like about this game? Well, I think you have the ability to coach as much as you want. Any of the action PC games give you either you can do real basic things or you can sit down there and do specific game plans and pan things out. You can do draft leagues if that's what you're interested in. You can do take the greatest players from every team and assemble your own teams. And the games are frequently on sale, and so are the seasons. So it doesn't take much, if you're a huge basketball fan, to assemble a killer library of seasons. But essentially, what it does compared to other games is it gives you the ability to assign shots to a shooter. You tip it tells you who's open, who's not open, and it gives you the ability, as opposed to some other games, to play the game as opposed to sit on the sidelines and coach as far as bring it in subs and, and such. It, re it really does immerse you in the game. Okay, now the, the Action PC line, so they obviously have basketball, baseball, football, hockey, and golf, okay? And you've, pl you've played them all. I, I think I have two to a lesser degree. Uh, you have more experience on this than I do. How does this compare with the other four sports as far as uh, overall gameplay, fun, and maybe uh, time to play a game? Because I have yet to play a full game of basketball on this. I, I've tinkered around with it, and I've had some fun with it. But I haven't played a full game yet. So you've played full games out of all five. How does this compare to the other four with all, all I that? I think it's the longest of the four. Um, depending on what era and year you play in, because you have to make decisions on at least 100 shots. And if you play both offenses, it's close to 200. So it's about 40, 45 minutes. If you turn on the chalkboard feature, which I think is probably still one of the weaker ones of that line, it's going to take you over an hour. But then again, if you don't want to rush and get immersed, it's fine. And there's a great modding community, so you can get... Uh, pictures for everybody. You want the true logos for teams, you can do that. You want to play on what the courts actually look like over a given year, you can. Uh, you know, that's one of the nice things. It's a good basketball experience. And leads can be blown, and there's enough rare plays. Players get injured. So you really do have to think when you play it but if you're looking for a good basketball experience, it really does a good job. It's just whatever area you want to do is, is fine. Now, I found that the hockey game, you know, getting 30 shots a team, I, I take every shot in the hockey game, no matter what team I'm playing. I want to say the hockey game is almost a minute by minute for me, meaning that 20-minute period takes me 20 minutes to play. So it's almost about an hour for me to play the hockey game. Uh, how long does it take you to play a hockey game? About 40. Really? You can do that faster than that? Yeah, I have the play-by-play -play set for pretty quick. Okay. Um, I don't. I only play one team, and I change my lines automatically, but I don't – I just kind of play it out. It has a good flow, and sometimes you just don't get a lot of face-offs. Okay, but, so I, you know, for me, the hockey game I would say is about five or ten minutes quicker than the basketball game. 
Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I tend to take a long time with the hockey. I think I have it all laid out for the the broadcast with all the, the chalkboard and, you know, the, right. the play by play. I don't play the scene. I, I always get my horizontal and vertical confused. And so I just I don't want to rush through it, but it's more just, you know, the hockey game is designed for me to play by myself as opposed to some of the others, which are definitely set up to for YouTube. Okay. Now, how long does it take you to play a football game, Action PC? Half hour, forty minutes. Really? I thought the football would take longer. Nope. No. And that's and I do both offenses, like I do if you go to Retro Sports Network. Right. Okay. But I don't. I don't take long to dawdle on the calls, because once you know, you can see in the football, you can see the percentages, so you know what your rate of success is before you're calling the play. And generally, you're going to play an era that you like anyway, so you're going to be familiar with how it's set up. Okay. All right, so uh, any more final thoughts here on Action PC Basketball 2019? Uh, you know, I like I said, I think if you haven't bought it in a few years or really just have a hankering to, to create your own own teams, um, it's a good buy. Uh, if not, or if, or if you're a big Toronto Raptor fan, if not, Depends on when you bought it last. If you're trying to dip your toes in the water and go, oh, you know, I don't have a basketball game around either on my tabletop or for my computer, get it. There's always sales, and I think you will find that it's a bit more immersive than you think. There's 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 coaching decisions, but once you get the hang of it, it kind of goes it goes faster, and so. I'll give it three and a half out of five stars. I mean, compared to the baseball game where it's, wow, yeah, you got to get this this particular year. It's not it, – it's a good game, but it's not, oh, my goodness, I got to have this right now. And, and that's if you had the last one, right? So Right. Okay. Okay, because I have the 2018, and, and I play a little bit, and I have fun with it. But uh, watching you play, yeah, I'm like, I'm not – and I think I watch Al Red Sox play a little bit too. I'm not sure if I need to upgrade. I don't think you need to upgrade. If you're a casual fan, and if you bought last year or the year before, I don't, you know, the updates are incremental. But if you haven't bought in three or four years, or as I said, huge Toronto Raptors fan, yeah, you want this. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Well, that's a look at the Action PC Basketball 2019, the newest version that came out. What did you say? It was last Friday? Was it last Friday? It was. We're taping this on the seventeenth, so it was last Friday. Yeah. Okay, so that was the twelfth. Uh, I think it was. It come out on. So that's available now at DKSports.com. If you go to their shop, you can check out the basketball game. And uh, you know, myself and Ron are big fans of all the the, the action PC games. And uh, he was just checking a look at the basketball game here. All right, cool. So we'll wrap things up here from Studio B as we uh, wrap up Digital to Dice Episode One. Uh, our website, again, is digitaltodice.com, and we do have a, a phone number that you can leave us a voicemail or send us a text message we may or may not read or play on the show. That is 978-751-DICE, 978-751-3423, and we have a Facebook group, too, that we'll be linking to um, to all the major sources on Facebook and Delphi, the, uh, the Digital to Dice face group group uh we'll, we'll start building off of that shortly and uh, i think once we get enough people subscribe we, we can actually have some kind of a a website for that i'm not sure if it's facebook.com slash group slash digital to dice or digital to dice podcast something like that i'd have to look yeah it just it just get up and running so i don't want to give that away too much but we will have a facebook group if you indeed want to come on facebook and uh check that out uh on twitter uh i my standard twitter is gamer goalie that's what I was using for my video game podcast. I'm still using Gamer Goalie. Ron, you got a Twitter you want to plug? I left Twitter. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, you left You left the hate of Twitter, social media? I left all the fun and excitement of Twitter behind. <laughs> and my blood pressure dropped about 15 points. I did. I, You know, I when I go on social media now, I kind of... I I put my 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 head down and I head to where I want to go. I, there's certain groups I love, uh, you know, uh, the Dave Little's Facebook group, uh, sports. Uh, t- tell us about Dave Little's Facebook group. Oh, sports simulations and fi- and uh, replays on Facebook. Yeah, did good. a tournament for Dave um, for baseball, and it's over a thousand members. One thousand thirty-eight. The last time I looked, 
and it is kind of like what this podcast does. Whatever you're doing in, in sports, uh, you can post your projects right there. A Dave, little site that's on Facebook, sort, Sports Simulations and Facebook uh, and Replays. Sports Simulations and Replays on Facebook. Yeah, check that out. So we'll be posting there. There's a couple of the Facebook groups we'll get involved with as well. Um, but, yeah, I tend to head there, and I tend to head to my, my – I think I get a tabletop sports group I'm part of and a sports replays uh, group, and I, and I just head there when I go on social media now, and it, it's a lot safer to do it to do it that way anyway. So, uh, all right, so your YouTube is Retro Sports Network. Oh, there I am. word. I wanna, I'm uh, just Dave Gardner on YouTube. We have a bunch of videos up for some of these games that we're playing. If you want to actually physically see – uh, Ron, play that in action. Go to his channel there. He's got some videos up of the uh, the 2019 Action PC Basketball game that we were talking about today. So anyway, so that wrapped things up here for Digital Dice Episode 1. We hope to catch you the next time, and uh, we may even have a guest on next time. We'll have to find out as we uh, we secure our guests. We've got a whole bunch of people we need to get back. Now that we got show one up, now we can show people where to go. The show is officially up and running. And uh, we'll get some guests on as well. And we, we'll be going live shortly, too. And we will announce when we go live so you can join us in the chat. So make sure you get the Spreaker app. That's Spreaker, speaker with an R, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Spreaker.com is where the show is. And there's an app for that as well. So you can Just listen to think of it like Sylvester trying to say the word Spreaker. <laughs> Never quite thought of that. That's a good way to put it. But that's where we're hosting our show. They have a free app. If you sign up, you can chat with us when we're live and leave comments on the show. Anyway, I'm Dave. He's Ron. Ron. That's Ron. That's right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bye-bye.